Boy, it is hot here in Tennessee. I'm Cayman Reynolds, and let's talk about feeder rims, patties, and getting your splits to grow bigger. So, I just got done with a conversation with a fella who basically told me that I'm messing with evolution and all that kind of stuff, and I'm, I guess I'm that vital of a person. It just affects the whole world. I didn't realize I was that amazing. So, anyways, I do believe we should take care of the planet. I'm a big proponent of that. I want to eat healthy. I don't want a bunch of junk in my food, but at the same time, there's a balance to everything. Nature does not care about you or your bees. You need to realize that if you want to be successful with your bees, and if you go to a harsh place that will eat you for dinner, you also need to realize that. Thankfully, we live in a country that we don't have a lot of dangerous stuff anymore. So we don't have to worry about going in our backyard and getting mauled by something, typically. Now, a couple of us do, so make sure to pack something. Now, I'm not talking about lunch. All right, now, this is some signs that this colony needs more space. Obviously, you can see all this comb up here. They're getting such good nutrition. You can see brood up here. Look at this. Now, we started this as a three-frame split. This is drone brood. All these big drone cells, and this is all less than a week old. There's some eggs up in here, so we need to make sure that the queen's not getting into here, um, getting up in here when we scrape this off and everything. But we have a bunch on the lid. I've already looked for the queen up here, so we're good. We'll shake those off, and we're going to have to scrape all that off. Now, some people are like, well, that's why I don't want to use feeder rims, because you'll have this problem. The thing of it is, we're able to feed our colonies patties this big, and this is a good pound to this colony right here because they're able to eat it from below and above and the sides and really tackle that patty which really helps to them be able to consume it quickly and it also helps them defend against the small hive beetles because they're surrounding it so well the small hive beetles have a hard time even getting access to it and the bees will harass them this is a good population though but they weren't that big a month ago so let's let's see how they're doing what they really need is some more space so now that we see this we can take this out Another thing is, bees do not raise copious amounts of drones unless they feel like they are really healthy. Unless they feel like they have extra nutrition that they, they can expend, especially this time of the year. This is really important for multiple reasons. One, because it shows us how good of a job we're doing. And two, we're raising queens. We've got some bees over there. We've got some bees a couple miles that way. We've got to make sure that we have plenty of drones available for our queens. They can't just be any old drones. They need to be good drones. Our drones come from gentle stock. So the more of our drones we get to our queens, now we can't inbreed too much, and we don't. And we'll talk more about that later because you want to talk about complicated bee subjects right there. We'll talk about the birds and the bees. Uh, and not real into detail or anything, but, you know stuff about you know how birds eat bees and stuff like that maybe I don't know but this colony right here let's see if I can get this frame out they are filling this out now for those of you who aren't from Tennessee know that we go through a semi dearth I, I call it just the dearth because it's easier to say than semi dearth a lot of people think that a dearth dearth is just nothing period well that is true I, I call dearth a time where my bees will not go full throttle or even maintain what they have yeah I mean there's just all kinds of food in here so what we have from about mid-June in my location of Tennessee to about mid you know to late August you know we're getting some pollens in now the goldenrod starting to bloom but we don't have enough for a double deep colony to keep its size I'm telling you if we go from early June to the end of August and we don't do anything. Even if we just leave all their feet on there, they're gonna shrink naturally in population. And some people are like, well, that's what the bees wanna do, let them do it. Well, I'm making splits and stuff like that. And not all my colonies are the same. Some of them need less work than others. It's just the same way with horses, dogs, cats. You have some that are easy keepers and some that don't do as good. And there's certain conditions that happen. They're drawing this comb out right here. Look at that. Yeah. So we're feeding really good, good brood down in here. So basically what we're gonna do, 
is we're just going to scrape this off right here. And we're going to throw on a whole box of combs because I've got some extra. And we're just going to ditch this feeder rim. Once we get rid of that, uh, once we get double deep, we'll throw the patty in between the doubles. But this, this colony has a lot of bee coverage, a lot of young bees. This colony is going to make a lot of honey and pollen to go into winter. And we don't take honey and pollen in our fall, so you know the, the, that's kind of what we do is we, we feed them in summer keep them big and then they really make a lot of the real stuff and they do well so I know I've said a lot of this before but it's worth repeating again our goal is to try to get you all successful with your hobby you've seen our package versus new challenge if you haven't watched those videos because we've got we started with five colonies we fixed a couple that had queenless problems bad queen problems we've made two really good splits We're, we might even make some more splits before the end of the year Worst case scenario, I bet you I'm going to have five good colonies out of that. And then we go into next year and we pay for our hobby in the first year. 